So let's imagine we have a certain planet. Let's call this planet um, Joe. Okay, we are just going to call this planet Joe. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Get my fellow mathematicians! Welcome back to another video. While back we talked about physical systems where the mass of an object is going to vary over time. Namely, for example, the leaking pendulum losing part of its mass over time. Then we transitioned over to the so-called rocket equation. It's a fundamental equation which is going to guide how the velocity of a rocket is going to change over time. This is also, of course, uh, a system where our mass is going to be time dependent. Our rocket is going to lose fuel over time in terms of burning the fuel, meaning the mass of the rocket is going to decrease over time, for example, linearly. But this is not the only part of rocket science that you can take a look at. So on the one hand, we need to see how the velocities are going to change on the rocket over time. But on the other hand, we need to find out how to even shoot them into outer space. How can you accelerate an object so much that you can shoot it out of Earth's orbit, getting rid of the gravitational potential well that we got right here? So just as a little illustration, let me get for example my shoe that I got here. So what happens if you have this shoe and you shoot it upwards? Well, I mean, it's going to make like a parabolic flight, okay? It's going to have a parabola getting tracked down once again. If I shoot it upwards a bit faster, it's going to go up pretty straight, but comes back down once again. Once again, it's like a parabolic flight. But what is going to happen if I shoot the shoe upwards with such a force, with such a velocity that it's going to escape Earth's orbit and not come back anymore. This is what we are going to talk about today, namely the so-called escape velocity. And we are going to basically derive it for arbitrary planets. Three really doesn't need to be the Earth. It could also be Mars, your mother or whatnot. Uh, the, the moon, for example, best planet out there. But before we leave Earth, I would like to present to you today's sponsor Kaspersky and their astonishing trip into the future, Earth 2050. Our world is changing continuously and at a rapid rate at that. And just look at all the technological advancements we achieved within only the last few decades. But technology isn't the only thing which is advancing over time. No, our society does so too. So what would our Earth look like 30 years from now? Kaspersky's Earth 2050 is your way to predict together with a huge community of other people, sci-fi lovers, how our Earth is going to be shaped in a few years from now. Earth 2050 is an engaging sci-fi encyclopedia, you could say, that gives you the possibility to share your own opinion about our possible future. Switch between feed and map mode to watch all predictions in a blog or on a world map categorized by regions. And the best thing about it is that it's for completely free. Everyone can predict the future in some kind of way. Even I posted my own prediction in regards to the last video where I basically featured Elon Musk. Everyone is now connected by super fast internet connectivity. Elon Musk's influence grows even more than it already did back in the 20s. After receiving additional funds from the government, Elon Musk is finally able to improve Starlink into such a powerful connectivity apparatus that everyone on planet Earth is able to receive high-speed internet for a highly affordable price. So seriously, why do you want to wait any longer? Why not go over there, like some predictions that are already there, comment under the predictions, share your own prediction with other people by using the link at the top of the description. Make sure to support the channel this way and now we are going to dive right in. So let us recap what we actually want to find out. So let's imagine we have a certain planet. Let's call this planet um, Joe. Okay, we are just going to call this planet Joe. Now we got a rocket. On Joe, okay. The rocket can also uh, already be in a certain p position. It already um, flew upwards a tiny little bit, or it can be right on the surface of Joe. Now, this right here is our rocket. And now, what happened with the shoe if we didn't throw it upwards with enough velocity? 
What happened is it did a parabolic flight. It went back down to Earth. Now shooting it upwards even faster meant that our parabolic flight is going to be more straight in this direction, but still we are going to fall back down. Now, what we are looking for is the minimum velocity. It's basically a minimizing problem where our rocket is going to leave the Earth's orbit, the Earth's gravitational potential well. Meaning we are going to get this, parab this parabolic flight out of the way and we are going to shoot it straight upwards in a straight line, leaving Earth's orbit. We are going to call this minimal velocity, escape velocity, let's call it VE. Don't mistake it with the extrude velocity that we had the last time around. And we are going to see what this velocity is actually going to be. It's actually pretty easy to calculate. Now, at first we are going to take a look at conservation of energy. You can also go with conservation of momentum in my opinion. There are many ways to derive the escape velocity. This is just one way to do so. If we have no air resistance and if we shoot it upwards in the radial di direction, meaning if we have a perfectly spherical planet, basically this right here is a circle and now we are going to draw a tension line. We are going to shoot it upwards perpendicular to our tension line. Then we can say that conservation of energy is going to hold and since there is no air resistance, we also don't have any dissipative process going on. We don't need any thermal energy at all in our conservation of energy. Conservation of energy tells us that the total energy of a system is going to be um, the, the addition of the kinetic energy that we got, so the movement of our rocket and also the potential well that we got by our Earth or Joe in our case. And the addition of those two, kinetic plus potential energy, is going to be a constant. It's going to be the total energy of our system. Now, what is our kinetic energy? Our kinetic energy is basically m over 2, where m is the mass of our rocket, times the escape velocity that we got. Meaning, mass over 2 times the escape velocity, but squared, obviously. This is our kinetic energy. Now, what about the potential well that we got? We need to take a look at the gravitational potential of some arbitrary planet. In a normal case, if you are dealing with Earth and if you start on the Earth's surface, you are just going to say that this is the mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration times the height, basically. But just imagine, as mentioned before, that our um, rocket is going to be already somewhere in the air, kind of far away from the Earth's or Joe's surface. And this means that our rule really doesn't apply for regular potential energy with m times g times the height. For this, what you need to take a look at is the generalized um, gravitational potential. Uh, Newton derived it before. And for this, as a starting point, we're going to use something that we have used before on this channel, namely the generalized gravitational force. Generalized gravitational force is going to just tell us how the masses of two objects are going to attract each other. In the formula what we get is going to be the generalized or the universal gravitational constant times the big mass, big mass of our uh, Joe that we got right here of the Earth of the planet. This right here is going to be the bigger mass times the smaller mass which is obviously going to be the same mass as here meaning it's going to be the mass of our rocket divided by and now r squared, where r is the distance between the centers of masses, meaning the center of Joe and the center of our rocket that we got right here, center of mass. And now this right here is a conservative force. And what you can do with conservative forces is you can integrate conservative forces to get yourself the corresponding potential energy or the potential well of our Joe. Meaning, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate, all of these are constants, okay? All of these are constants, so the only variable we can integrate with respect to is going to be our R. So we are going to integrate our force with respect to R, giving us overall that this right here is, okay? G, M and M are all constants, G times M times M times the integral of 1 over r squared is r to the negative 2th power dr. And integrating this right here is fairly easy. We're just going to raise the exponent by 1. And also we need to track the negative sign to the front, giving us negative r to the negative 1th power. Or in other words, we can say that our gravitational potential, the generalized one, is going to be negative g times m times m divided by r. And yeah, this is basically it. Meaning, 
kinetic energy plus our potential. Potential has a negative sign in front, so G times M times M divided by R is going to be the total energy of our system. Now the total energy of the system is going to be a constant. Really doesn't matter if it's positive or negative in our case. It needs to be positive, okay? <laughs> Energies are defined to be positive in classical me mechanics overall, so the total energy of the system. But this constant right here really doesn't matter. You can either set it to a positive value or you can just say since we are looking at the minimum velocity, minimal velocity to launch it out of the Earth's orbit, we can also say it's a minimizing process. So why not say that the total energy of the system must be equal to zero? Now, now we got that this right here is equal to zero. And now we are just going to do some simple reasonable analysis right here. If we were to bring this part to the other side, we are going to get that mass over two times this k velocity squared is equal to g times m times m divided by r. And now just imagine what we want to do is we want to shoot it upwards with such a velocity that it escapes the gravitational potential well of Joe. Now, what this also means in other words is if our kinetic energy were less than our potential energy, then our object would just fall back down to Earth. I mean, it, it does make sense. If the gravitational attraction is bigger than the velocity you shoot it up with, then obviously we are going to fall back down. It's the parabolic flight that we got right here. So we don't want it. Now, what we need is we either need this equivalence relation that both are equal, meaning we are just going to barely escape the gravitational um, force or the, the gravitational potential that, that our Earth is going to put onto our rocket, or we can even be bigger than that. Okay, both relationship holds as long as our escape velocity is, is basically um, bigger than what the gravitational attraction is going to be, then we are basically good. So we can, for simplification purposes, just take a look at the equivalence relation right here and now solve for our escape velocity. Meaning overall, if we were to divide both sides by m under the condition that it's not equal to zero, but this wouldn't make any sense in the context of having a rocket. And by multiplying both sides by two and taking the positive square root, we need a positive velocity or positive speed, you could say. We are going to get that the escape velocity overall is nothing other than two times g times m divided by r, but all of this in square roots. And this right here is the escape velocity that we wanted to derive. Okay, just simple analysis on the total energy of the system. There are other ways to derive it by setting the initial energy equal to the final energy, etc. But I think this analysis is already pretty good. And I thank guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, then please like, subscribe, and recommend channel if you want. Didn't say it in a while. Don't forget to also check out today's sponsor Kaspersky and Stemrich.eu, your place for handcrafted STEM products. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao!